Welcome to Inference. This is the place where you learn and improve. In this video, I will be talking about the human species. Who are we? How do we compare with the rest of the natural world? Why are humans dominant and where are we heading? Can we maintain human dominance or will we lose our apex predator status? The human species is a bipedal mammal that is native to the planet Earth. The average modern human is about 1.8 meters tall and has a lifespan of about 70 years. Humans are a very diverse species with a wide range of skin colors, hair colors, and eye colors. Humans are also very intelligent and are capable of creating and using complex technologies. Humans use the environment as their source of sustenance. Human body energy is generated by the foods we eat. Humans are omnivorous species, meaning their potential food sources are very diverse. Metabolism is the process by which the body breaks down food and converts it into energy. The body uses this energy to support various functions, including muscle contraction, heart rate, and brain function. Metabolism is a complex process that is controlled by several different hormones and enzymes. The most important of these are insulin, glucagon, and adrenaline. Insulin is responsible for regulating the sugar level in the blood, while glucagon helps break down stored sugar and release it into the bloodstream when needed. Adrenaline is responsible for increasing the rate of metabolism when the body is under stress. The metabolism, metabolism can be divided into two main types, anabolic and catabolic. Anabolic metabolism is responsible for the growth and repair of tissues, while catabolic metabolism is responsible for the breakdown of tissues and the release of energy. The body constantly uses energy from both anabolic and catabolic processes. However, the relative amount of each type of metabolism depends on the body's needs at any given time. For example, during periods of growth and development, such as childhood and adolescence, the body relies more heavily on anabolic metabolism. This is because the body needs to build new tissues and store energy for future use. In contrast, during periods of starvation or stress, the body relies more heavily on catabolic metabolism. This is because the body needs to release stored energy, energy to support its functions. The rate of metabolism is determined by several factors, including age, body size, and activity level. Metabolism can also be affected by illness, stress, and certain medications. Human reproduction is the process by which humans produce offspring. It is a complex process that involves both the male and female reproductive systems. The male reproductive system produces sperm, which fertilizes the female's egg. The fertilized egg then implants in the female's uterus, where it develops into a fetus. The male reproductive system includes the testes, which produce sperm, and the penis, which delivers the sperm to the female. The testes are located outside of the body, in the scrotum. The scrotum is a sac of skin that helps to regulate the temperature of the testes. The testes produce sperm and testosterone. Testosterone is a hormone that is responsible for the development of the male reproductive system and the secondary sex characteristics of males, such as facial hair and a deep voice. The female reproductive system includes the ovaries, which produce eggs, the fallopian tubes, which transport the eggs to the uterus, and the uterus, which is the site of fertilization and pregnancy. The ovaries are located in the pelvis, on either side of the uterus. The fallopian tubes are thin tubes that connect the ovaries to the uterus. The uterus is a muscular organ that holds and nourishes a developing fetus. The reproductive process begins with sexual intercourse. During intercourse, the male's penis enters the female's vagina. The penis is lined with thousands of tiny, hair-like structures called cilia. The cilia wave back and forth, creating a current that draws sperm from the penis and into the vagina. Once in the vagina, the sperm travel through the cervix, which is the opening of the uterus, and into the uterus. The sperm swim through the uterus and into the fallopian tubes. The fallopian tubes are lined with tiny, finger-like projections called fimbri. The fimbri sweep the egg into the tube. Once in the fallopian tube, the egg and sperm meet and fertilization occurs. Fertilization is the process by which the egg and sperm combine to form a single cell called a zygote. The zygote contains the genetic information from both the egg and the sperm. The zygote travels down the fallopian tube and into the uterus. The zygote implants in the lining of the uterus, where it begins to grow and develop into a fetus. The placenta forms during pregnancy and provides the fetus with oxygen and nutrients. Nutrients. The fetus grows and develops inside the uterus for approximately nine months. At the end of pregnancy, the baby is born through the vagina. The human reproductive process is complex and fascinating. Amazingly, such a complex process can occur so smoothly and result in the birth of a healthy baby. The food sources of early humans were very different from what we eat today. Our ancestors were hunter-gatherers, which means they hunted animals and gathered plants for food. The animals they hunted included mammoths, bison, and deer. The plants they gathered included berries, nuts, and roots. The diet of early humans was probably quite varied, depending on where they lived. In some areas, there would have been more game available, while in others, there would have been more plants. Early humans also ate insects and other small animals. In the early days of human history, food was a scarce resource. To survive, our ancestors had to compete with other animals for food. This competition was fierce, and many early humans died in the process. To increase their chances of survival, early humans began to cooperate. They formed groups and hunted together. This cooperation increased their chances of success and allowed them to share the food they caught. As time went on, early humans began to develop more sophisticated methods of hunting and gathering food. They began to domesticate plants and animals, and they learned to farm. This allowed them to produce more food than they could obtain through hunting and gathering. The development of agriculture allowed early humans to settle down in one place. This led to the formation of villages and eventually cities. As the human population grew, so did the demand for food. To meet this demand, early humans began to trade with one another. One another. They exchanged goods and services, and this allowed them to obtain the food they needed. The food trade was a key factor in the development of civilization. It allowed early humans to specialize in different tasks, and it led to the growth of cities and the rise of civilizations. The climate early humans had to live in was one of the most challenging environments on the planet. The average temperature was around 30 degrees Celsius and the humidity was often very high. The early humans had to contend with extreme weather conditions, including floods, droughts, and storms. They also had to deal with dangerous wildlife, including lions, tigers, and bears. Despite these challenges, the early humans were able to adapt and thrive in this hostile environment. The early humans lived in a variety of environments, including forests, grasslands, and deserts. The climate would have varied depending on where they lived. For example, the early humans who lived in the Sahara Desert would have had to deal with extremely hot and dry conditions. The early humans were hunter-gatherers. This means that they hunted animals for food and gathered plants. The early humans probably used simple tools, such as spears and knives, to help them in their hunts. The early humans were also able to make fire. This would have been a valuable tool for them, as it would have allowed them to cook their food and keep warm in cold weather. The climate early humans had to live in was very challenging. However, the early humans were able to adapt and, and thrive in this hostile environment. They used their intelligence and ingenuity to survive and eventually thrive in the world we live in today. In the animal kingdom, there are many examples of creatures that have developed certain adaptations that give them a strategic advantage over their competitors. For example, some animals have developed camouflage to help them avoid being seen by predators, while others have developed venom to help them kill their prey. In the case of humans, it is our intelligence that has given us a decisive strategic advantage over other animals. Our intelligence has allowed us to develop a wide range of technologies that have greatly enhanced our ability to survive and thrive. For example, our intelligence has allowed us to develop tools and weapons that have greatly increased our hunting efficiency. We can now kill animals much larger than ourselves, and we can do so from a distance, without having to get close enough to be harmed by them. 
our intelligence has also allowed us to develop agriculture, which has allowed us to domesticate plants and animals. This has greatly increased our food supply and has allowed us to live in much larger groups than would otherwise be possible. Our intelligence has also allowed us to develop medicine, which has greatly increased our life expectancy and our ability to recover from injuries and diseases. In short, our intelligence has given us a massive strategic advantage over other animals and has allowed us to become the dominant species on the planet. Several factors have contributed to our intelligence. One of the most important is our brain size. Our brains are much larger than those of other animals, and this gives us a significant advantage in terms of processing power. Another important factor is our ability to use language. Language allows us to communicate our thoughts and ideas to others, and this allows us to share information and learn from each other. Finally, the impact of our intelligence has also been greatly enhanced by our ability to use tools. Tools allow us to extend our reach and our abilities, and they have played a vital role in our development as a species. The ability of humans to create tools is one of the most important aspects of our species. It is this ability that has allowed us to become the dominant species on the planet. Tools have allowed us to adapt to our environment, hunt and gather food, and protect ourselves from predators. The first tools were probably simple sticks or stones that were used to help with tasks such as hunting or gathering food. Over time, these tools became more complex and sophisticated. Eventually, humans began to make tools from metals such as copper and iron. The development of tools has been an important factor in the success of our species. It is this ability that has allowed us to become the dominant species on the planet. A tool is an object that is used to help with a task. The first tools were probably simple sticks or stones that were used to help with tasks such as hunting or gathering food. Over time, these tools became more complex and sophisticated. Eventually, humans began to make tools from metals such as copper and iron. The early human gatherings were small and intimate. They were held in caves or the open air, around fires. The people who gathered were usually family or close friends. They shared food and stories and sang songs. They celebrated births and marriages and mourned the dead. The first human gatherings were probably held to give thanks for the food that was gathered. The first hunters held gatherings to give thanks for the animals they had killed. The first farmers held gatherings to give thanks for the crops that they had grown. Gradually, the gatherings became more elab elaborate. People began to invite friends and relatives from other tribes. The gatherings became a time to socialize and exchange news and gossip. In the early days of human history, territorial expansion and domination were key factors in the development and growth of civilizations. From the early days of hunting and gathering to the establishment of agricultural societies to the rise of great empires, territorial expansion has played a significant role in human history. The territorial expansion of early humans was largely a result of the need to find new sources of food and shelter. As the population of early humans increased, they began to exhaust the resources in their local area. This led them to migrate to new areas in search of food and shelter. The migration of early humans was often a slow and gradual process. They would move into an area and slowly establish themselves there. Over time, as the population in an area increased, they would begin to expand their territory. This process of territorial expansion continued as early humans began to develop more sophisticated methods of hunting and gathering, and eventually began to establish agricultural societies. The development of agricultural societies led to a more rapid and extensive territorial expansion. The ability to cultivate crops and raise livestock allowed early humans to settle in previously uninhabitable areas. This led to the establishment of cities and the rise of great civilization. Civilizations. The expansion of these civilizations was often accomplished through military conquest. The most powerful empires would expand their territory by conquering weaker neighbors. This process of territorial expansion led to the rise and fall of many great empires. Today, territorial expansion is no longer a significant factor in the development of civilizations. The world has become too small and too interconnected for territorial expansion to be a viable option for most countries. Instead, the focus has shifted to economic development and the globalization of trade. However, there are still some areas of the world where territorial expansion is a significant factor, such as in the case of the expansion of the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. The ter territorial expansion has played a significant role in human history. It has been a key factor in the development and growth of civilizations. However, it is no longer a significant factor in the development of civilizations. In the early days of human history, people were organized into hierarchies based on their ability to procure food and resources. The most powerful and influential members of society were those who could control the food supply and other resources. This gave them a great deal of power over others in the community. As time went on, these hierarchies became more complex, with different levels of power and influence. The most powerful members of society were still those who controlled the food and resources, but they also had other advantages, such as access to better education and healthcare. This allowed them to maintain their power and influence over the less fortunate members of society. Today, human hierarchies are still based on the ability to control resources. The most powerful and influential people in the world are those who control the flow of money and resources. They have the power to make decisions that affect the lives of millions of people. They can start wars, or they can bring peace. They can create wealth, or they can destroy it. They have the power to change the world. The people who control the resources of the world are not always the ones who are the most intelligent or the most virtuous. Often, they are the ones who are the most ruthless and the most willing to use violence to get what they want. They are the ones who are the most adept at manipulating the system to their advantage. They are the ones who are the most skilled at playing the game of power. The progress of human societies has been a long and arduous one, starting with the early humans who first began to domesticate plants and animals and eventually developing into the complex civilizations we see today. Throughout this journey, there have been many different factors that have contributed to the advancement of human societies, including technological innovation, economic development, and social change. One of the most important factors in the progress of human societies has been technological innovation. From the first tools and weapons made of stone and bone to the development of agriculture and the domestication of plants and animals to the industrial revolution and the invention of the steam engine, humans have always been able to find new ways to make their lives easier and more efficient. This has allowed us to gradually increase our standard of living and to become more productive as a species. Another important factor in the progress of human societies has been economic development. As our technology has improved, we have been able to produce more goods and services, which has led to growth in the global economy. This, in turn, has allowed us to trade with other societies, which has led to even further growth in the economy. This has also allowed us to create more jobs and improve our standard of living. Finally, social change has also played a role in the progress of human societies. As our technology and economy have developed, we have seen a gradual change in the way we live and interact with each other. This has led to the development of new social institutions, such as the family, the government, and religion. We have also seen a gradual increase in the amount of social mobility, as people have been able to move up in the social hierarchy. Hierarchy. This has allowed for a more equal distribution of resources and a greater sense of social cohesion. All of these factors have contributed to the progress of human societies over the centuries. As we continue to develop new technologies and grow our economy, we can expect to see even more progress in the years to come. The potential futures of humanity are varied and uncertain. The status quo may continue for some time, or we may see a shift towards transhumanism or posthumanism. Alternatively, our species may become extinct. Each of these potential futures has different implications for our individual and collective lives. The status quo is the current state of affairs. Humanity has made great strides in recent centuries, but we are still a long way from our full potential. We are limited by our physical and mental limitations, and our societies are still plagued by inequality, violence, and poverty. If the status quo continues, we may make further progress in overcoming these challenges, but it is also possible that we will stagnate or even regress. 
Transhumanism is the belief that we can and should use technology to enhance our physical and mental abilities. This could involve anything from using artificial intelligence to augment our intelligence, to using genetic engineering to create designer babies, to implanting ourselves with artificial limbs or organs. Transhumanists believe that these enhancements will allow us to overcome our limitations and become a more advanced species. Posthumanism is the belief that we will eventually transcend our human form and become something else entirely. This could involve becoming immortal cyborgs, merging with artificial intelligence, or evolving into a new species. Posthumanists believe that we will eventually outgrow our human form and that our current form is just a stepping stone on the way to something better. Extinction is the belief that humanity will eventually become extinct. This could be due to natural causes, such as a global pandemic or an asteroid collision, or it could be due to our actions, such as nuclear war or environmental de destruction. Extinctionists believe that humanity is not necessarily doomed, but that our future is uncertain and that we should be prepared for the possibility of our demise. In the coming centuries, humans will likely spread out into the cosmos. This expansion will be driven by several factors, including the search for new resources, the desire to explore new frontiers, and the need to find new homes as the population of Earth continues to grow. As we spread out into the universe, we will encounter a wide variety of different environments. Some will be hostile, while others will be hospitable. The key to our success will be our ability to adapt to these different environments. One of the biggest challenges we will face is the issue of energy. To expand into the cosmos, we will need to find new sources of energy. This will be a difficult task, but it is one that we must overcome if we are to succeed. Another challenge we will face is the issue of communication. As we spread out, we will need to find ways to communicate with each other over vast distances. This will be a difficult task, but it is one that we must overcome if we are to succeed. The final challenge we will face is the issue of resources. As we spread out, we will need to find new sources of food, water, and other resources. This will be a difficult task, but it is one that we must overcome if we are to succeed. If we are to succeed in spreading out into the cosmos, we will need to overcome these challenges. Challenges. We can do so, but it will not be easy. We must work together and use all of our resources if we are to succeed. The expansion of humanity into the cosmos is an exciting prospect. It holds great promise for our future. We should work together to make it a reality. In a future scenario in which humans become a multiplanetary species, the solar system will be our home. The planets and moons will be our playgrounds, and the asteroids and comets will be our resources. We will have colonies on Mars, the moons of Jupiter and Saturn, and perhaps even on extrasolar planets. Our spacecraft will be powered by fusion reactors, and we will be able to travel to the stars. This future is not as far-fetched as it may seem. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in the exploration and settlement of the solar system, and several private companies are now working on technologies that could make this future a reality. In particular, the development of reusable spacecraft and fusion reactors could make it economically feasible to establish permanent settlements in other worlds. The first step in this scenario is the establishment of a permanent human presence on Mars. This could be accomplished by several different approaches, but the most likely is the construction of a base on the Martian surface. The base would be supplied by robotic spacecraft, and it would be staffed by a small team of astronauts who would live and work there for extended periods. The next step would be the establishment of colonies on the moons of Jupiter and Saturn. These colonies would be similar to the Mars base, but they would be larger and more permanent. They would be supplied by robotic spacecraft and staffed by teams of astronauts who would live and work there for years at a time. The final step in this scenario is the establishment of settlements on extrasolar planets. This would be a much more difficult undertaking, but it is not impossible. There are several potential sites for such settlements and several different approaches that could be used to establish them. The most likely approach is the construction of a space station in orbit around the target planet. The space station would be supplied by robotic spacecraft, and it would be staffed by a team of astronauts who would live and work there for an extended time. This scenario is not without its challenges. The biggest challenge is the development of the necessary technology. But even if the technology does not exist today, it could be developed in the future. The second challenge is the economic feasibility of such an undertaking. But even if it is expensive, the benefits of establishing a permanent human presence in the solar system would be immense. With the development of the necessary technology, we might establish permanent settlements in other worlds within the next few decades. All right, folks, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about our species, the awesome humankind. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.